Hi, I'm Tim Nelson. I'm a reporter here at Minnesota Public Radio News. I've been covering flooding on the Red River on and off since about 1997. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about one reason it's so hard to figure out exactly how high the water will go. It turns out the easy thing for forecasters is to figure out how much water is actually in the valley. They look at how much snow has fallen, how much is left on the ground. They actually fly planes over, take pictures of what's there. They have someone go out and melt the snow to figure out how much water is in it. They even go back to last summer, for instance last August, and look at total rainfall. There was a lot of rainfall last August, so they can know how much moisture is in the soil to begin with. So by this time of the year, they usually have a pretty good idea of how much water is in the Red River Valley. The trouble is figuring out when and how it will go into the river. So we're going to go back here a little bit to 8th uh, grade geometry. You might recall that uh, area times length equals volume. So let's say this is a cross section of the Red River in Fargo. Knowing the volume of water that's coming, Forecasters can divide by the length of the river and know how much of the channel a given flow of water will fill. So they can then figure out exactly how high the water will be in each given flow. Now they don't use badly drawn cartoon rivers to do the forecast though. They use what's called a rating curve. And this I can handle. It is a graph. Now what they will do is plot the cubic feet per second against the height of the river in feet. Like in most natural phenomenon, the Red River has this sort of gentle curve whereas as the flow increases, the height of the river goes up. Now the trouble is, in very flat rivers, when they get very full, like the Red River, a funny thing happens at the very top. When the, river, when the river flow reaches its peak, instead of going back down the curve, it actually goes back up. That's to say that as the volume of water decreases, the river actually gets deeper. Now, it only lasts for a little while. It's called a loop because this graph just kind of loops back on itself. It's very difficult to calculate this loop. It doesn't happen every year. It doesn't happen on every river. It doesn't even happen everywhere on the river. The only reason they know it's there is because they have U.S. Geological Survey teams out on the river in boats checking the flow of the river and the stage or the height of the river. It's very difficult to forecast. Uh, we found that out in 1997. The original forecast for the Grand Forks was about a little over 50 feet. Um, the, for, the Weather Service missed it by about 3.8 feet. It actually got almost to 54, got a little over 54 in the end. They went back in 1998 and looked at what happened and about two feet of that error they discovered was this loop. They hadn't known it was there, they hadn't known it was coming and only discovered it looking back at the data. So it's very difficult to see what's going to happen on a year like this. It may or may, this loop may or may not happen this year. This, I like to think of it as uh, the river giving one last wag of its tail on the way out. And that's why forecasters have such a difficult time being very precise about how deep the water is going to get. I'm Tim Nelson from Minnesota Public Radio News. Thanks for watching.